Wait on Shelly. Uh, oh, she got it right there. She's on the ball. All right. Victoria, will you lead us in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We ask your blessings for everyone at this meeting and for all those who are suffering from either loss of a loved one or bad health. And we just ask that you bless us all with safe travel home and as well as good decision making for our Cherokee citizens. Amen. Amen. Shelly, can you do roll call, please? Yes, sir. Rex Jordan? Here. E.O. Smith? Here. Keith Austin? Here. Harley Buzzard? Here. Joe Bird? Bonnie. Julia Coates? Here. Sean Crittenden? Here. Joe Deere? Here. Mike Dobbins? Here. Kanan Duncan? Here. Daryl Legg? Here. Wes Nofire? Here. Dora Petskowski? Here. Mike Shambaugh? Here. Mary Bakershaw? Here. Janice Taylor? Here. Victoria Vesquez? We have a form. All right. Okay, we need an approval for minutes. Approval and second minute. Take roll call. Approved. All right, first up today is Management Resources, David Moore. On the ball. Good afternoon. It's very good to see you guys in person finally for a while. <laughs> Uh, Y'all have our report. Uh, if there's anything I can answer, I'll try. I'll just say that our group is still very busy sanitizing, and we're staying on top of that. Uh, we don't want this to come back and get on top of us again. So, Any questions? I'll try to answer them. Any questions for Mr. Moore? I just have a comment. Um, David, on the uh, Tri-Council, you're still working on maybe providing lunch for those people that if we take that tour to the bison, they're, they're really wanting to see our, our bison herd. Yeah, I working. think we'll, we've got that handled and have it figured out how to spread out a little bit. we got some tents that are will borrow from CMB that are easy to set up, and uh, we'll try to provide a couple of them. So we should have plenty of room to spread out. And hopefully we we will not be there that long. Just, mm -hmm. you know, a little short tour there, eat lunch, and get, get back over here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sean? Hey, Dave, I know you've got to do the hiring, but I just want to let you know that we're going to be hiring somebody that's going to be the meat processing plant. Mm -hmm. Todd may want to come in on this. I've got a, some guys wondering when the employees are going to going to start in there, when we're going to find out who's... who's uh, who's got hired and yeah uh, uh, just I know just we're maybe. getting close as far as the plant being finished mm -hmm. uh the chief of staff can speak to yeah. the yeah maybe just the ballpark Todd yeah. just I'm sorry like on the uh, meat plant you know we've got a few employees wondering if they made the cut or when they might start or. yeah so we've uh, conducted a few interviews uh, similar to the PPE factory we're trying to focus on both the Restore and the HOPE grants, both those two grants, one focuses on those individuals or family members that have been affected by opioids uh, and they need to get back on their feet uh, for the HOPE grant, and the other is Restore, and those are people that have been impacted by COVID-19. So a food service worker that lost hours, lost wages due to tips, things like that, or lost her jobs. Um, and so we've conducted a few interviews with some individuals there that we think are going to be good potential candidates. Uh, but then we'll also uh, need to begin selection of a plant manager uh, and identifying that individual. And within two weeks, we should have some work moving forward on that. Okay. If y'all haven't seen it yet... Uh it's first class. It's really a nice facility. Uh, going to be proud of it. Yeah, what I would like to do is uh, work on a time to do a walkthrough and share that with you guys before we begin operation in the facility and show you kind of the thought processes between the design features and um, ethical treatment of the animals and, and safety for the employees as well. So there's a lot of thought, a lot of effort and resources went into making sure we do this well. 
So I will I'll work to see if we can't set up some time to do some walkthroughs well, in that facility. Well, thank you. And Dave, did you all do quite a bit of work at the Walmart, old Walmart and Stillwell? Oh, yes, quite a bit. <laughs> hey, and we did a tour just the other day, Todd, and man, that is, that's amazing and impressive yeah. and so thank you both for, for yeah. that. Da David only did all of it. Yeah, it Not part of it, just no, all of it. No, no. What was amazing, most of the work you can't see. If you'd look up in the ceiling grid, it, it's, it's amazing how much HVAC and power and stuff is, is up there. Uh, mm. Turns over a lot of air in that building. So yeah, appreciate that. It's pretty cool. All right. Yeah, it's funny how the, the public is so interested in in the processing plan, I get a lot of comments. People are excited about it, especially all the ranchers and everything. So it'd be good. And on the Buffalo, the other, now's the perfect time to take a tour up there because, boy, they're in really good shape. Michelle, you have a question? Thank you. Uh, David, I saw here that we're going to, you're continuing implementation of new sanitizing procedures. Are we still doing the, the COVID testing in certain locations? We, we don't do the COVID testing. We, uh, we do the sanitizing. Environmental will do some surface testing. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Environmental group does that. Uh, I can't answer that for them, but we still do all of our sanitizing as, you know, as we always have. I, w I was wondering what the testing results are if we're continuing to do it. So uh, between our health team and uh, the environmental programs, uh, the, we have some individuals inside the health care operations, the facility operations that do testing inside the health care facilities. And then our environmental program staff under Secretary of Natural Resources headed by Wayne Isaacs, they've been doing both surface and air. We've been concentrating primarily on air. Uh, giving some of the new variants to see if we pick any of that up. Uh, we have found a few positives on surfaces still uh, within the last couple of weeks, but we have found zero in our air sampling. And those little collection points uh, set up, uh, they sample the air for a total of 30 minutes at uh, three different locations and 10 minute intervals. Uh, and then that sample sent off for testing, uh, but we haven't had any positives. In fact, our positivity rate has dropped down uh, quite a bit. So uh, the tests that we've been sending in, we haven't had a lot of, uh, of positive samples, but we've been focusing a lot on the airborne uh, testing uh, more than the surface. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. You bet. It's Shambo. Maybe a little premature, but... Um, the questions I've had about the processing plan is, um, are people going to be able to bring things to be processed, Cherokee citizens? Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to start out custom processing. Uh, we're going to work into USDA, you know, certified plant at some time. But we're going to start out small and work our way up. Uh, that plant's designed to hold to do 10 animals a day. That's a lot of beef. Uh, it's designed for, we're also doing deer, hog, so uh, I'm sure the deer will probably be a pretty big deal this year. <laughs> you going to do wild hog or domestic? Uh, domestic's all I heard. I haven't, that, that, you're the first question I've heard on that wild hog stuff. Uh, did you? I don't know, but it's something to find out, and I'll, I'll check on it. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. All right, anyone else? Yes, sir. Just follow up, Dave. Yeah, that wild hog. I'm interested in that stuff. I mean, you know, I don't. I don't know the health or hadn't done any research on uh, how healthy that is or whatever. But there's a lot of them out there, and if we could squeeze out some healthy sausage or bacon, I mean, there you go. There's a bunch of young ones out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Councilor Shaw. Yes, I, I do want to say that uh, I appreciated your help the other day. I attended a, an electronic waste uh, recycling event, and the staff was so nice. I've got to tell you what wonderful PR for our tribe. Did a great job, and thank you for your help. All right. Anyone else? Harley? Uh, David, I'm just curious about... If, if this is going to be USDA certified plant, is it? 
Not at first. Not it's at just first. yeah, we're going to work towards that. Okay. That's a, a lengthier process and okay. uh, there's more requirements involved in it. Well, that's what I was. And wondering we're going to kind of learn as we go and yeah. you know. Well, that's kind of what I was wondering if USDA would allow you to do right. those type of operations yeah. like that. That's okay. our that's our end goal. Okay. All right, anyone else? Okay. Always enjoy your report. You, you do a good job on it. Thank you all very much. All right. Real estate services. Ginger Reeves. Good afternoon. I think you have a copy of my report. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to address them. Right. Any questions? No? no questions. Guess you got off easy. Good job. Thank you. Environmental programs. Chad Harsha. Good afternoon. Uh, I, I believe the environmental program specific report was uh, submitted to the body for review. And if you have any specific questions on that, I can take them. All right. Any questions? Somebody's like, are you? No questions? Daryl? Hey, Chad. So I'm not going to ask about the pine trees, but I am going to ask you, do we have anywhere where we own land where we, where we may be removing lumber? And I, I'm going to tell you why. The, uh, the cost for a wheelchair ramp and material used to be $900. And now one wheelchair ramp for material only is about $3,600. Wow. And so I, I'm just, you know, the Northeast Tech up in Little Kansas bought a portable a uh, sawmill that they can take their students out, cut trees, make the timber. It wouldn't be treated lumber, but it would at least be lumber. And I'm just trying to think, do we have anything, or, or if we wanted to do firewood in the winter or whatever, but um, do we have anything available that we may be looking at a project where we, we may have to do some clearing like that and we can make use of that? and save us some money in the long run, yeah. especially on wheelchair ramps. I, I do think that um, in, when we do have a lumber program, I mean, firewood program, you know, where we clear out certain growth areas that need to be managed uh, as part of the land management strategy and program. As far as actually foresting operations, you know, this kind of speaks to the issue of on, on trust and restrict or trust properties. It requires the BIA's approval and they have to issue, um, you know, uh, what, what we've asked them to issue is a permit to help um, cover the cost of actually thinning out and, and producing the, the, the lumber. Now, the issue that we have had, at least historically, uh, in recent times is, you know, there's not any mill that's very close. And when you talk about pulling out a portable mill, you know, that's a different economic equation. And so the, the review up to this point over the past several years has been that additional funding would be required to actually harvest timber. It's, it's a little bit different than cutting firewood. And the only way that that has been an economically feasible uh, uh, process is to have a funding source. And so that's why we've submitted a grant, fund, a grant request to the NRCS to help offset the cost of that. And that is where we initially proposed to remove some of the pine trees that we had on trust property because that financial contribution would make it to where it wouldn't be uh, you know, very, it wouldn't be very financially intensive on the tribal budget to get that done. I don't know what that looks like in terms of economics of changes from COVID-19 in the supply chain. Uh, that's something we can, we can take a look at, but it's still, you know, the, the proximity of available mill houses here is what kind of cr creates the problem. And that somewhat speaks to the issue we have with uh, the BIA not being able to approve our request because it doesn't make financial sense for them. No, and I appreciate that because I'm definitely not an expert on lumbering or yeah. any, whatever you call it. I just, I'm not an expert on that at all, but I just, I was wondering if there was any kind of way we could come up with a strategy to, I don't know, just the price of this stuff is just getting so outrageous, it's hard to, 
you know, expect housing rehab to be able to afford it with a budget or yeah. anything, you know, with the cost of uh, lumber these days. But I appreciate you, Chad. Great idea there. Harley? Uh, just to follow up on what Councillor Leg was talking about, is there any tribal land that has timber on that you don't have to go to the Bureau to do that stuff with? Right? Uh, I mean, I'm certain that some of our tribal land held in fee has timber resources available. I don't know that we've evaluated it um, in terms of an economic, the economic sense of it, because it's it's kind of the same issue of, that we're having on trust properties with not having mills available and, and the cost to produce, uh, you know, lumber for construction. It doesn't. It doesn't make financial sense. I think a lot of that is where is concentrated in the heavy mill areas, like at the Pacific Northwest. That's where the, most of the lumber lumber industry, as it exists today, uh, is profitable. Now, I don't know that it's been considered in the context of COVID-19, but I, I think that there might have to be an additional evaluation of how long there's going to be anticipated disruptions in the supply chain. But we can take a look at that. Mr. Nofa, <clears throat> on uh, speaking more about timber, uh, do you have, could, could you sub maybe email me over the um, uh, forestry management program that you sent to the BIA regarding the land in Delaware County? I'd like to look over that uh, just to, to see where maybe uh, we might be able to influence some things as a council to possibly put some legislation out there requiring the BIA to act on something might be a possibility to help you do be able to do your job there. So in, in, in terms of a forestry management program, I don't think we have anything uh, for specifically for timber harvesting because it's not something that we've done in the past and it's not something that's, uh, you know, widely utilized in this area because of the economic reasons that we've already discussed. So the conversation that we've had with the BIA is not, um, is more is more in the context of requesting that they approve a timber cell under under the regulations, which are part of the Code of Federal Regulations, and in this particular instance, asking them to approve an exception under the um, uh, under a permitting request, which we believe is an option in in the in the regulatory process or the administrative process that the BIA follows. Although there's been some disagreement between us and them as to what that looks like, because it's never happened before. All right, so it's just a different type of request that they've never done before on this specific land over there regarding those pine trees? I don't believe that the BIA Eastern Regional Office in modern times has ever approved a timber lease because it's just not a prevalent industry here anymore. There used to be mills scattered throughout Oklahoma years ago, and most of those have since closed. And the prog, I said primarily up north, Pacific Northwest, those are the areas where you have, ha and, and down south some areas, but... Uh, that's where you have the most of of uh, America's timber production. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out because I I <laughs> I'm wanting to do something here with this because I think there's a a lot of golden opportunity, especially now with the lumber kind of inflation that we've seen over since COVID. Um, and I know you're you're trying to jump through hoops dealing with the BIA and Councillor Buzzard has been going after this for a while and I, before he leaves office I'd definitely like to be able to see help him get some some solution to that um, I think it gets a lot of solution for our land too of moving forward so um, yeah I mean uh, well, I guess so so the application you do have uh, that you sent over there rega regarding the permit if you could send that over to me that permit request I'd like to look at it to see where I could help out with it Okay, so the application process is, so here's how th th this kind of works, because it is somewhat of a, of a new approach for this regional office. They, um, you know, it's, it's several hundred pages, and we have submitted to them the information requ that required for, on, on our end, and then they have, to, they have to complete the economic review piece of it and, and the uh, communication piece with the NRCS. So the application is still in the process of being developed, uh, but it's, it's um, not a formal application like you would think that you would receive, uh, you know, and fill out and mail in for a grant. It's, it's just utilizing the administrative process with various pieces of paperwork. But okay, yeah. all right. I've, I've tried to, try to find out from their end too on what's the holdup, and they were saying that there was a forestry management program, that we haven't developed and sent them. So that's why I was asking if we had one. So, I'm, so it sounds like it's just a working process that, I'd like to know some more about. 
I just don't know what to ask for from you because if there's a permit request application that you have documents on, I just like to see what more they might need uh, in order to be able to make this happen. Understood. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? May I take a show? Thank you. Uh, Secretary Harshaw, could you tell me where we are with the fishing license, uh, temporary fishing license permits for at-large Cherokees who come into Oklahoma? Sure. We are still in the conversation um, of what a, a, a compact renewal or an additional long-term compact looks like. We're having those discussions. Um, as I mentioned last month, there's been a little bit of uh, administrative changes from the state of Oklahoma side that has introduced new individuals and, and that, that were not part of that process. So there's a learning curve. Uh, we're still in the process of working towards that goal. Okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm talking about that. It's been asked, uh, I've been asked literally uh, about the possibility of this happening for other Cherokee citizens in other states. Is that a possibility? I think it's... Um, you know, anything is possible. It has been a discussion point that we've had with them, um, with the state for, you know, certainly last year. I had a lot of conversation about it and, and, and touched on it the year before. It's a, it's a complex uh, discussion between us and the state because, it, because of some sensitivities on the state side with prior legislative attempts to um, open up in-state hunting and fishing to out-of-state residents. It, it, there's a lot of history that's not, you. that's, has nothing to do with us that, uh, you know, create some some discussion points that we have to work through, and we're trying to. Well, you know, it would be my hope that once we get this in Oklahoma, that perhaps we can look at other venues to help those at-large citizens with the same privileges that we're getting in, in the state of Oklahoma. Understood. I hope that could happen. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, what all do we recycle as a nation? So we have, um, you know, recycling program. You know, our, our predominant um, waste producer, I guess, would be, you know, CMB because of their access to the public. And, and I know they have a, have implemented over the, over the years, um, you know, some recycling efforts. We have talked internally on our end about a, a potential recycling program for, for the nation, but we just don't generate as much uh, waste as we would on the, on the commercial or the business side. So uh, we are, we are looking at opportunities potentially at the landfill for recycling, um, some, some type of waste streams that they receive within the confines of the regulations. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing conversation that we're looking at. You know, I would think that this tribal complex, we should be actively involved in recycling. I think if anybody should be concerned about the environment, it should be the Cherokee Nation. Most and certainly. That's, that's just my two cents on that, but I think I'm right. Well, most certainly. And one of the um, you know, things we did implement is we've, you know, the, the um, limited use of styrofoam across all of the, uh, the, the government side and the business side. And, uh, you know, that's something that um, goes a long way in reducing, you know, the, the types of waste that aren't biodegradable over time. And that's something that we have done and has, been, and has worked pretty well. Okay. Thank you so much. Do we have a written policy program on uh, recycling? I believe we do at, um, at Cherokee Nation businesses, and I'll have to take a, a look at that, but we have, um, you know, over, over, over the years, as I understand it, considered various types of policies and programs. Um, uh, whatever we have in place, would you please forward a copy for me, to sure. me? Yeah. Thank you. Councilman Ball. Have we thought about looking at um, possibly metal for our uh, handicap ramps? Uh, I know it's not near as high. And I know you'd have to put anti-slip, but I'm sure you'd have to put anti-slip on a wooden one, too. But uh, metal has not gone up as, as high as lumber. I know it's $50 a sheet for a particle board, so that's just insane, But uh, especially for that grade of wood. But have you looked into that at all, uh, or would that be something you'd be willing to do? I, I haven't personally, you know, my office hasn't looked at substituting, you know, handicap-accessible type, type of ramps. I don't know that we have... I don't know that there is a need um, for replacement at, at Cherokee Nation facilities. I think that might be a more of a facilities management question, but I do think that is an, uh, an interesting concept, uh, being creative in, in, in trying to address the supply chain issues that we have with actual timber and lumber. Yeah, I know that when we get calls from people who are needing, you know, I got one lady hasn't walked <clears throat> in forever, and she just got a prosthetic leg, and she needs a rail on a handicap ramp. And, I mean, this is kind of a... 
emergency quick deal she's getting home. And, um, you know, with the price of lumber, it may be an option. I don't know. I'll, I'll talk to Jerry about it and, and see what she thinks. But going back to the trees, <clears throat> you know, I've hunted uh, most of that land in Delaware County. And, um, you know, whenever we planted those trees or whoever planted those trees in a, in a lot of places, they planted them too close. And they're just, they just got stunted. They're not very big around. I don't even think you could use them. There are some places who have, that have really big trees. Um, but I would hope if we do that, that we would really select log that because, boy, it looks terrible when you take all that big stuff out of there. And if, if we would do it selectively and keep that um, looking natural like the way it is, it would be um, a bonus. I think it would, it would be a accomplishment if we could do that to keep you know pristine the way it is somewhat and if, and if I could res respond to a uh, counselor Shaw I did I did uh, fail to mention that we do operate a recycling center on on site here um, I think it's managed through facilities management where we do recycle paper and things of that nature so we do have um, you know some efforts in that regard on ongoing and that, so yeah And also, food distribution recycles their cardboard and, and their pallets. There's quite a bit of cardboard in a year's time. Anybody else? All right. You want to give your other one? Your other report? Yes, please. Uh, a couple of updates. I, you may have a, a saw on the um, you know, some of our communication releases last month. You know, our Earth Earth Week event. We put up quite a bit of effort in our group, putting put finalizing and putting together this programming. Um, you know, we, we, we started off the week with um, um, restating our commitment to reducing carbon, carbon emissions uh, at the Cherokee Nation and, and pointed if, as one specific example our electric buses that I've mentioned a couple of times or, uh, with this body that we, we finally formally transitioned them over to our transit system. So they, they should be in service soon, if not, um, if not already. So that's just... You know, it was it was fitting to highlight that one example, which is pretty, um, you know, it's pretty remarkable feat uh, that 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 we're leading here, both in Indian Country and across the region. Uh, we also held a couple of uh, hazardous waste events, uh, one in Tahlequah, uh, one in Nawada, and one in Wagner. We also released our or our, ha held our annual environmental festival for local uh, middle schools and high schools. Unfortunately, we were we weren't able to do it in person this year, so it was a virtual platform and. That was released the middle of May, and, and we received a lot of positive feedback from local schools uh, who used it as a unique opportunity to change things up with some of their, with, uh, some of their classrooms, having a, um, you know, while we all adjust to keeping things fresh and, and, and in a world where we have limited public events. Um, we did our tree giveaway uh, during Earth Week. We gave away 500 trees. It was well attended. And, and uh, I think we, we served everyone who, who had an interest in that and uh, a good turnout as, as we expect and as per usual. We've also finalized our mail out from the seed bank. All requests that we've received, we've been able to uh, accommodate in some way and with the, with the available seed varieties that we had. We did a total of 66, 100 uh, roughly packages that we mailed out. So I, I, um, it's a it's a pretty big effort and, and, and good work with folks on our end. What kind of an all hands on deck situation to get things mailed out timely for the planting season? Um, I think that kind of sums up. We've had a busy week with uh, with um, our Earth Week and Earth Day programming. So we were we were uh, pleased with the uh, response and uh, participation that we received from the public. Okay. Anyone else? I'd just like to add on, on the tree giveaway, you know, it was a big success. I wish we could maybe in the future have some subsites, could maybe give away a few more trees to different counties. I think it, that would be a big hit too if we could look into that. All right. Good report. Thank you. Thank you. Any you know, old business? New business? The next meeting will be scheduled for. Monday, June 14th at 2 o'clock. Thank you.